So children, before we start with the class, let us say the pledge. Place your right hand on your heart and please repeat, I, Shruti Narayan, commit to be vigilant and bear in mind at all times the risk to myself and my colleagues from COVID-19. I promise to take all necessary precautions that prevent the spread of this deadly virus. I promise to follow and encourage others to follow the key COVID appropriate behaviors. To always wear a mask, face cover, especially when in public places, to maintain a minimum distance of six feet from others, to wash my hands frequently and thoroughly with soap and water. Together, we will win this fight against COVID-19. So children, just a brief recap of what we had studied. We had studied that uh, in the previous class, we had studied about the world pressure belts. And there are four main pressure belts, the equatorial low pressure belt, which lies between 0 to 5 degree north and south of the equator. We studied about the cause for this pressure belt, for the reasons of low pressure belt, if you remember, there because of the vertical rays of the sun, because of the high humidity, because of the rotation of the earth. The second belt is the subtropical high pressure belt, which lies between 30 to 35 degree north and south of the equator. If you remember, I had told you that this belt, uh, this belt has high pressure mainly because of the sinking of the air. Then we studied about the subpolar low pressure belt or the circumpolar low pressure belt, which lies between 60 to 70 degree north and south of the equator. And lastly, we had studied about the polar high pressure belt which lies between 80 to 90 degree north and south of the equator, which is caused because of the extremely low temperature. So in today's class, we'll study about the types of winds. So children, wind. Wind is actually the horizontal movement of air. Wind is the movement of air, which is caused by the uneven heating of the earth by the sun. Winds always blow from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure, just like water which flows from a higher level to a lower level. The winds also blow from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. You cannot see it or hold it, but you can feel its force. It can be strong enough to carry sailing ships across the oceans and uproot trees from the ground. Wind is actually nature's attempt to balance inequalities in air pressure. The next important term is air current. The vertical or nearly vertical movement of air is called air current. Winds and air currents manage a system of circulation in the atmosphere about which we are going to study today. The direction and speed of the wind is controlled by a combination of factors. But the two most important factors are pressure gradient and the Coriolis force. So pressure gradient, if you remember, it is the difference in pressure between two, point, two points in simplest terms. So we'll study about pressure gradient and the Coriolis force right now. So children, first factor is pressure gradient, which greatly influences the speed of the wind. So if you see, wherever the isobars, isobars, if you remember, I had told you in the previous class, the lines joining places, which have the same atmospheric pressure. So if you see on the right hand side, wherever the isobars are closely spaced, over there, the pressure gradient is steep, meaning that the speed of the wind is more. And wherever the isobars are far apart, the pressure gradient is gentle and so the speed of the wind is also low. So wherever the pressure gradient, the greater the difference in pressure between two points, the steeper is the pressure gradient and higher is the wind speed. So I hope this is clear to you all. The second factor which determines the wind 
direction is the Coriolis force. If the earth did not rotate on its axis, all winds would blow straight from high pressure to low pressure and they would die down eventually when the pressure equalized. But the earth rotates, which is why winds curve as they blow. This curving motion is called the Coriolis effect. The direction of this turning effect is stated in the Ferrell's law, which states that any object or fluid moving horizontally in the northern hemisphere tends to be deflected to the path of its uh, to the right of its path of motion in the southern hemisphere there is a similar deflection towards the left of the path of the motion so the types of winds so if you see in this slide there are four types of winds planetary winds periodic winds local winds and variable winds so in today's class we'll emphasize mainly on the planetary winds so there are some winds which blow throughout the year from one latitude to the other in response to the latitudinal differences in air pressure these winds are referred to as the permanent or prevailing or the planetary winds there are certain winds which reverse their direction periodically with uh, time, with change in season and they are referred to as the periodic winds. The next is the local winds. The local winds, there are certain winds in different parts of the world which flow in comparatively small area and have special characteristics. They are referred to as the local winds. And the last category of wind is the variable winds. Variable winds because their speed and direction varies from time to time. So we will be studying in detail about each of these types of winds. So I already told you what planetary winds are. So there are three main planetary winds. The trade winds, the westerlies and the polar winds. We will study about each of these winds in detail. So the first is the trade winds. They blow from subtropical high pressure belt to equatorial low pressure belt. So uh, these winds they blow in the zone lying between 5 degree and 30 degree north and south. In other words, they cover almost the entire area between 30 degree north and 30 degree south latitudes on both sides of the equator. And they are actually the result of the pressure difference between the equatorial low pressure belt and the subtropical high pressure belt. So, in the northern hemisphere, the wind moving towards the equator is deflected by the Earth's rotation to flow southwestward. Thus, the prevailing wind there is named from the northeast and has been named as the northeast trade winds. In the southern hemisphere, deflection of the wind is towards the left. This causes uh, the wind to blow from the southeast towards the northwest and you all must have studied in your lower classes that winds are always named after the direction from where they blow. So in the southern hemisphere they are referred to as the southeast trade winds. Now these trade winds they bring heavy rainfall to the eastern coast of the continents lying within the tropics. On the western coast of the continents, these winds do not bring any rainfall. It is because here they are offshore winds or winds blowing just parallel to the shores. Therefore, the western areas within the tropics suffer from aridity. The great deserts like Sahara, Kalahari, they all lie on the western margins of the continents where the trade winds are offshore. So, these Trade winds, uh, they are regular in strength and direction. The name trade is derived from a nautical expression to blow tread, meaning to blow along a regular path or to tread. So, the, the characteristics of the trade winds are that 
they are warm winds they pick up moisture and they are responsible for heavy rainfall on the eastern side of the tropical lands they are called northeast straits in the northern hemisphere and southeast straits in the southern hemisphere they have fixed velocity and they are regular they are permanent or prevailing winds so these are the important characteristics of the trade winds the second type of uh, permanent wind is the characteristic uh, is the westerlies the westerlies or the prevailing westerly winds blow between 35 and 60 degree north and south latitude and they are created because of the pressure difference between the subtropical high pressure belt and the subpolar low pressure belt in the northern hemisphere the westerlies generally blow from southwest to the northeast and in the southern hemisphere from northwest to southeast so they are onshore on the west coast and offshore on the east coast meaning that they bring rainfall on the western coast and they do not cause much rainfall on the eastern coast so the characteristics of the westerlies they blow from subtropical high pressure to subpolar low pressure belt they are very strong winds and often blow from western side of the landmass they are interspersed by cyclones and cause drizzle and they are much more stronger in the southern hemisphere because of the absence of the landmass now children due to the presence of vast expanse of oceans in the southern hemisphere the westerlies are much more stronger and more constant in direction because there is no friction as compared to the northern hemisphere all right there's no obstruction in the path of the wind so the westerlies are best developed between 40 degree and 65 degree south latitudes here they are also known as the brave west winds according to the sound created by the westerlies these latitudes are often called the roaring 40s the furious 50s and the shrieking 60s which are dreaded terms for navigators now the third type of planetary wind is the polar easterlies or the polar winds These polar easterlies are created because of the pressure difference between the polar high pressure belt and the subpolar low pressure belt which means that these winds blow from polar high pressure belt towards the subpolar low pressure belt so they are referred to as the polar winds now in the northern hemisphere they blow from northeast to southwest direction and from south in the southern hemisphere they blow from southeast to northwest direction under the influence of the coriolis force because these winds originate from the poles they are extremely cold winds so these winds are also referred to as polar easterlies because they blow from the east now they blow from cold areas to comparatively warm areas and do not cause much rainfall their capacity to absorb moisture is also very little because of the low temperature 